Hello. In this video, we are going to be exploring Kruskal's algorithm. Kruskal's algorithm is an algorithm for finding the least costly spanning tree. If we look at this graph here with nodes A, B, C, D, and E, then these numbers here represent the cost of making these certain connections. Now, I want you to imagine that this is a long distance phone network. And, you know, before cell phones, we had to connect all these different phones together with, with telephone wires. Now, the thing is, is that these connections here that we're showing, that's the cost it would be to build that wire. So we're not saying it's built yet, but that's what it would cost. Let's say I had a connection from C to A and from C to B. Now my question is, can A talk to B on the phone or do we need to build this line here that costs 10? Well, the answer is we don't need to build that extra wire because there's already a wire connection from A to B. This is a phone line that we have data speed at the speed of light or almost. Uh, so yeah, this, this conversation here is going just fine. We don't need to build this connection here. So in order to connect A, C, and B, it was really easy for me to just connect A to C and C to B, and now these three nodes, these people can all talk to each other on the phone. And that's what Kruskal's algorithm is all about. It's finding a spanning tree. So if you think back to when we to trees, trees don't have things called cycles. They don't have a, a loop. They, they can look very much like a, a tree with a root and branches that come out, but what they don't make is a circle. They don't make a loop. So if we've done a loop, then we know that we've actually got a redundant connection. We've got a, a wire that we've built between two nodes that we didn't have to build. Okay, so that, that's the introduction for Kruskal's algorithm. Now let's take a look at how we're gonna implement it. Well, we're going to be using a couple different data structures. First, we're gonna be using a class for the edges. So we're gonna make an edge class. And that's not a particularly common data structure as we know about it. Um, but I wanted to mention it here because this idea of having a data point that has multiple pieces of information in it usually means we need a class. So some sort of nested class or uh, another uh, Java file you could use or, or whatever language you're using with some sort of some sort of structure here. And, and this edge class is going to have a starting node um, you know, we could just call it node A uh, and uh, another node B, okay? And one more bit of information that this edge is going to have is it's going to, we're going to, the edge class is going to store information on, on the cost, okay? And it could be possible that cost could be different in one direction than it is another, but uh, for this, this graph here is not directed that the cost from A to C is the same as C to A. So we're going we're gonna to have a, we're going to store in our node class information about a node, about an edge, not a node, an edge. And that, that edge will be, but with two nodes it connects. So for example, edge AC would have a node of A, a node of C, uh, and a, a weight of five. Okay. Well, the other data structure we're going to be using is what's called a priority queue. Now the priority queue is kind of a semi semi sorted data structure. Uh, there are other things we could use to, to get the solution to Crucible's algorithm, uh, but the priority queue is going to be the fastest because we're, we're not going to we're not going to have to waste time keeping a perfectly sorted data structure. We'll be able to add with O login time to our priority queue and pull off at O login. 
which is, is going to be a lot faster than the average runtime of ON if we were to keep, do something with like an insertion sort. So we definitely want to use that priority queue. But we're going to have to put in our priority queue edges. So I'm just going to use a little angle bracket here to note that we're going to be using a priority queue of edges. So the question then is how will we be sorting them? Uh, you know, you could, in the Java programming language, you could supply a comparator to your priority queue, but th the best way to do that would be simply to implement comparable. And the way you implement comparable is to implement the compare to method. So our edge class is going to have to have some sort of implementation of compare to, and it'll compare to another edge. And the compare to method that we'll write will be saying that if uh, this, e this edge has a cost that's less than the edge E, then we'll, we'll simply return a negative one or some sort of negative number. We could simply return the difference between this uh, edge's cost and edge E's cost, and, and that'll take care of it for us. Uh, but remember that you would have to say uh, in your class, um, title, you would have to say that it implements comparable. Yeah, implements comp. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much the setup for how you're going to code it. Let's run through the algorithm uh, together. So I'm going to create a priority queue of type edges. Now, what's gonna, what I'm going to do is put the edges in that priority queue starting from some node. And it doesn't matter what node I start at. Uh, I should get uh, at least an equivalent answer. So let's go ahead and start at A. All right. So... We're going to start at A, which means I'm going to mark it as visited. Okay, so A is visited. So I'm just going to color it in here, and, and that's visited. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the edges that have A and another node that I haven't visited yet. So uh, A, B, that edge is definitely acceptable, right? And the cost of AB is, is 5, excuse me, it's 10. So we have AB equal to 10. Let's, we could take that one. We have AC that is 5. And we have AD that is 8. So on my priority queue, the least one, the, the first one I'll put in is AC, which is equal to 5. Now, the next item in my priority queue, it, is, it has to follow the heap structure. And I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the others in some sort of guess of how they might look, depending on how you feed them into your priority queue. But what I do know for sure is that this value here at the top of my heap will be the smallest cost. So we'll just put the others here. We have AC, which was five, AD, B equal to 10, and, and let's do AD equal to eight. Okay, well, that's good. We put each one of those in our priority queue. And the next step in our algorithm is to simply pull from our priority queue, and we're going to visit uh, that node. So I am going to go ahead and pull. So by pulling, and this is just going to come right off here, and we have AC, which is equal to 5. And I'll just go ahead and erase it from my priority queue. 
And when I do that, there's going to be some shuffling around in the internal structure of the priority queue. But whoever ends up AD is going to go to the top. Now AC equals 5. We, we, have this, we have decided that that is the best that we should take. So I'm going to mark C as visited. And we typically you do that with some sort of uh, visited visited uh, uh, array. Okay. And we're going to be taking that edge. So we can actually list this in a, we could make an, a, a list of edges to take. So the edges that we'll be using, we said was, you know, AC. And we could later go through and, you know, cycle through that list and add up all the costs to get the, the entire the total cost. All right, so we've, we're now, uh, we've added AC and, and, I, and let's just pretend now that we're sitting at this node C and we're gonna continue this procedure uh, again. Um, I'm going to add uh, any nodes that I, any edges that go to a node that I haven't yet visited. So it looks like I can add CD four six. I can add CB for seven, and I can add CE for eleven. And we need to do some rearranging of our priority queue here. So this this fellow here, that's not going to be there. CD is going to be out at the top, isn't it? Okay. Get rid of that little line there. Okay. So now that I've done that, we know that the next thing we're going to pull off, we're done with this, that's gone. We're going to pull off this CD, which is equal to six. So we pulled that off. This is gone here. This is gone. This guy here is going to float up to the top. All right, so CD, which was six, is what we're on. Well, let's go ahead and take it then. So I'm going to take the CD and I'll put add that to my list down here because that's going to be part of our uh, our cheapest network, if you will, and I'm going to mark D as visited. So we've made a network that contains A, C, and D. Now I'm going to add to my priority queue any edges that I can that um, link D, the vertex I'm on, if you imagine me you know, scouting this out. I'm, I'm sitting at D right now looking at what I can add. Well, I can't add DA because that is a, an edge that links to A, and A is already an edge over here that it's it would be in our it would be marked as true in an array of visited so uh yeah somehow we've marked it we visited that there's no other edge to add so i will not be adding things to my priority queue so i think you know what happens next we just need to pull from the queue again so i will pull I'm going to pull that one out. Uh, eight's going to somehow bubble up there on our priority queue. I'm having a little trouble with the clipping here. There we go. Move eight up there. Okay, so that was CB. CB is now part of our network for a cost of seven. And we have visited B now, and B is now the location that I'll be scouting from. So I'm going to look out. Again, I, I look over at A, and I, I see I could build this connection, but A is already marked visited, so I'm not going to put that on my queue. Um, B to E is a connection that we can definitely make. So we're going to add uh, B to E onto our priority queue. And, and B E is a, is a length of uh, 9. Okay, all right, and we'll go ahead and take, be done with that one. 
Okay, so at the top of my priority queue, I have AD equal to 8, so we'll pull that off. Oh, but wait a minute. What a, there's a problem here, because I've already visited both of, both of these vertices. So I can't use that one. And that's going to have to be part of our check. We haven't really discussed that yet. But before we take an edge, we need to make sure that we haven't already made that connection. When we put AD on our priority queue, we were, it was one of the very first edges we put on. And when we put it on, D was not yet visited. But now D is. So that one's just going to go away. All right. Next, um, looks like BE will float up to the top. And I could take BE off. And you can see that BE is equal to 9 is the next edge that we'll take. Because I have not already visited E. And um, that's it. That's it. Uh, we, we're done. And, and there are several different ways that you can know that you're done. Uh, we can stop the algorithm in different cases. Not every time would it might... There might come to a point where you can't make a minimum spanning tree because the graph was not connected. So if we ran out of uh, edges in our priority queue and we weren't able to add any more, uh, that would mean that the process was done. Uh, if all of the nodes in your array visited are visited, you're done. Uh, but for me, I think that the best way to look at it is you're always going to need one fewer edges than you have nodes in your graph. We have four edges in our uh, edge list, so we must be done. And we found the minimum spanning tree. So how do we put this in the code? Well, let me just give you one image of how you would represent this graph. This particular graph I find is best work represented using infinity for uh, a length that is that is not connected. So uh, we can't. There's no loop from a to a, so it's infinity. But for example, um, a to e, there's no connection directly from a to e. So you see that we've marked that with um, with this infinity. Now, what is that infinity? Well, it's not. It's not some pre-built constant. It's a constant that I would make in my code. And I would set it equal to, maybe call it I and F. And I would make it a very big number, much bigger than any of the numbers that I have in my graph. So maybe make it, you know, 1 million or something. And so when I look to add things on my priority queue, I'm not going to I'm not going to add an edge between two nodes which have a cost of infinity, and I can simply say equals inf, and that will make it easy for me to not have to worry about um, the you know zeros and things like that. Uh, you certainly could use zero for uh, weight, but it could become an issue if you actually had an edge that had a cost of zero. So I just use infinity because it's infinitely expensive. And um, that's pretty much it.